<laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.30. Do we have any additions to the agenda? Um, I see. There is a couple, yes. Yes, I see that. ARPA, planning for ARPA and personnel matters. Okay. So I'll write these down. Uh, the ARPA is where we give away the bushels of money, I believe. It is, and it's something Carl asked for, and I had forgotten it until after I put the agenda out, but before I did the minutes, so uh -huh. <laughs> I had to add it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that would be good to um, refine that concept a little bit. Um, You're going to do the minutes now? Good. <laughs> Me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm refining the concept of the bushels of money. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, review of minutes, February 28th. Um, I move to pass the, or to uh, approve the minutes as submitted. Second. Um, any further discussion? So I think I saw Judith's hand go up. I was no? going to second, but Amy, Amy was oh, okay. faster. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The minutes are approved. Thank you. And let the minutes of this week uh, reflect that John got here in time to participate in this vote. Hi, John. How Hi, John. <laughs> uh, we're doing well, John. It's good to see you. Uh, public comment. What do we have for public comment? Nothing. Okay. The next <clears throat> item on the agenda. 2022 select board organization. This is where we elect a chairman, a vice chair, and who else? Who else do we elect? Oh, someone, a secretary? Don't we? You, we don't, do you don't usually, but you could if you wanted to. No, I don't really want to, but I just want to find out what we usually do. Okay. So let's start with the chairman. What do we have? Can we just call yeah. it a person? Call it a person? Oh, chairperson. Person. Yeah, very yeah. good. Thank you. That's a good idea. Um, chairperson. What, what are we? I nominate. I think Seth would be a really good chairperson. <laughs> chairperson. I'm glad you used that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Think... I'll second oh, that. John has a second. Now, is it appropriate for me to call that question? <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want. Uh, okay, I think, I'll, I think, this, I'll is, I think question, this is what I'll, the, where I'll the vice abstain. chair is supposed to take over. The vice chair has to take over. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, Carl, I'll 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 take over. And uh, are there any other nominations for the position of chair or chairperson? Seeing none, let's proceed to. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Congratulations, Seth. Thank you. Back I to abstain. you. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you for your support. Um, the next position is vice chair. And I think that Carl is existing vice chair. Um, do you want to do that again, Carl? Just to ask. I would be happy to. Okay. Um, I'm quaking in my boots at the responsibility, <laughs> but I, I would be happy to. <laughs> I know it's not often that I haven't made meetings, but I think that um, I'd like to speak a word in support of Carl doing it because I think he's done a good job when I haven't been around. So thank you. There you go. So do we have a nomination for? I nominate Carl. And Judith seconded him. Amy made the nomination. Uh, all is, is there further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Congratulations, Carl Etnar. Thank you. For being reelected to the position <laughs> of vice chair. Um, is there any, any other positions that we have to do? 
you do the payroll warrant, the payroll vendor oh. warrants, all that fun stuff. But no, there's no other positions that you've generally done. But don't we just sort that out on the payroll vendor <clears throat> check over that I usually do? We don't have an election on that. No, you assign say. it. No, you don't yeah. say, say somebody makes a motion. It's like oh, okay. it authorizes someone to do that. Yeah. Okay. So would that would Seth be a good one to authorize? Well, I, I've been doing it and I don't mind doing it. It's, it's pretty right. handy for me because I drive by often. Yeah. And, you know, I know that we're going to have a change in positions in the office, but that doesn't change the fact that I do drive by often and it hasn't been too inconvenient for anybody to have me do it because I'm in the area. Mm -hmm. So I make a motion we authorize uh, Seth. Gardner to sign payroll warrants, payroll vendor warrants, and necessary expense warrants um, when due dates don't align with meeting dates. Nice yeah. motion. Second. I'll second it. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I abstain. Um, now, the way we've done it in the past when I couldn't make it, and it has been a few times, is Bruce has done it. Do you think we should have someone else, um, Bruce, in line? Because you're going to be gone. We will have a treasurer, but the treasurer shouldn't be checking anyway. But we have John that lives handy by. John's fine. He used to have Casey do it. That's right. That's why I'm bringing it up. We had Casey do it, and he was handy by. John's handy by. What do you think of that idea, John? Well, I'm, I'm handy by most of the time. I may not be that handy by like in April, but yeah, but most of the time. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I'm around most of the time, but there's yeah. been a few times I haven't been. And then uh, we have Bruce at the moment, but you know, that's coming up that he won't be here, but at least you'll be around. So I, I think that we should do that. Unless Carl's wound up to do it. Well, Carl's far away kind of. I'm right, on Carl? the opposite side of town. And yeah. The price of gas is crazy. Right. And mass transportation is not going to play into it very well because he lives kind of out of the way. He doesn't, he drives an electric vehicle though. So he's well, safe. Well, the electric vehicle is good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's fine to, to uh, have John do that. It's, it's fairly efficient because he's close. So we're being yeah. energy conscious too. Yep. Okay. He can walk down here. We're being health conscious too. <laughs> I'm gonna die doing that today. <laughs> Do we have to have a motion to have John as a stand stand in? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we need I a motion. To... I nominate John to be the stand in for that motion that he just so uh, so eloquently worded a moment ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second on that? Amy seconded it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Sean, you have a new position. All right. Okay. I feel power surging through my body. Wow. Really? Yeah. Uh, this okay. is a tea I'm drinking, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of tea is that? Okay. So then we have to have adopt the 20, 000, uh, 2022 select board rules of transaction. Um, are these the same as 2021? They are at this point, other than saying they're 2022. Okay. Um, so I don't. Okay. I have a I have a tiny suggestion just to make them clearer. I was looking through them earlier and realized there's a term in here that I don't understand, and uh, I think uh, we could fix that. And uh, it, but if we decide not to do it, it's not not a huge thing. Um, let me just find it again. It's on, uh, it's in section 5.11. So the last paragraph in section five, the uh, final sentence begins, a transcript of the minutes or a summary of discussion will not be kept, uh, et cetera, et cetera. A transcript of the minutes, uh, I talked with Bruce about it and he said basically it's a transcript of the meeting. And since the phrase a transcript of the minutes is incredibly opaque, I suggest we strike of the minutes and uh, just call it a transcript or a summary of discussion will not be kept. 
other than that, it will I not be fine. kept. Will not be kept though the full full sentence reads for a meeting unless specifically requested at least 24 hours in advance of the meeting. And there's a statutory citation there. So I'm sorry, could you just repeat how the sentence will appear now at your what you're proposing? What I'm proposing is that the sentence uh, read a transcript or a summary of discussion will not be kept for a meeting, etc. But we are keeping a recording. Yes, yes. But we're not binding ourselves to, to do it by these rules. All right. Unless somebody specifically requests it. We, are binding our, we aren't binding ourselves to do a recording uh, whether or not someone specifically requests it. We are binding ourselves uh, apparently under state statute to provide the transcript or summary of discussion if specifically requested. And Bruce says that there's a provision to have us charge the, uh, the party for the cost of transcribing. Oh, Do we, I see. Mm -hmm. um, is there any requirement, is there any language in here requiring us to maintain or to create minutes? It says how to create minutes, but it doesn't say we will or shall create minutes. Well, that that's in statute. Okay, I'm just so for purposes of um, this, we're not repeating what the statute require requirement is. We're specifying how we're fulfilling that statutory obligation. Is that what the purpose of this is? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's mixed in, Judith. Uh, for example, if you look at um, 5.6, access to public records, I just picked that at random because there's a statutory reference there. It begins by saying public records include any communication regardless of form relating to the conduct of town business. And then there's a citation that's uh, just for the purpose of making this document read clearly. Okay, the reason why I just ask is because absent um, understanding what minutes are, the first sentence and the second sentence might appear um, consistent. So minutes are one thing, and then a, trans a summary of discussion isn't the same as minutes. That's correct. And a transcript isn't the same as minutes. And a transcript isn't the same as a summary of discussion. That paragraph has three different concepts in it. Okay. It's <laughs> not very clear to me, but if others are okay with that, that's fine. <laughs> what, what do you think, Bruce? I want to ask our legal <laughs> resident legal expert. Uh, Judith is also a legal years expert. Of experience, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No, no offense taken. What are you saying, Bruce? <laughs> All I was going to say is that these were brought in. This is what uh, we had when we started. Right. We haven't overthought this. Right. Yeah, I'm. I'm fine with it. I just. No. No. I appreciate the discussion, actually, but I'm not sure where we're going with it. Yeah. So, as long I'm, as we I'm, understand I'm, that minutes are one thing, and then the summary of discussion is something different. It, it so. is right. I yeah. get that. What are you saying, Carl? Oh, I, yeah. If if there's objections to it, I, I will happily be at a retreat. This is not something worth spending any more of our time on. But yeah. uh, uh, but uh, seems like people are amenable to it. So I would uh, move to adopt the select board rules of transaction um, from last year for this year while amending them by removing the phrase of the minutes uh, in 5.11. OK. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, so we've adopted the 2022 Select Board Rules of Transaction. Um, the next thing we're going to move to, D, is the town meeting review. Um, I'm just going to see where we are for time. Quarter hour, right, right on time. Right on time. OK. Um, so what are we going to review? Everything passed. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments on what happened? Yes. I would, 
I would just like to commend um, Rosie and all the um, the BCA and all of the people who volunteered on that day and evening to count votes and the school board um, vote took place at um, the East Montpelier polling site and folks were there until 1.30 at night. And I really appreciate all of the hard work and effort that went into it. And I think that Rosie maintained good spirits and good order and lots of patience. <laughs> So I'm not sure about the good spirits, but she definitely was there a long time. <laughs> You're in a tight ship. And she almost I, talked me into coming back that night. I'm glad I didn't now. <laughs> I, well, I, I was there until 1 a.m. and I could vote for the good spirits. So oh, here, well, here. well, Rosie, thank you. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. It was a lot yeah. of work. Well done. Yeah. It was a lot of work. Um, I don't know if there's some, some way we can make that better next year. We need to talk about that. Yeah. Do you think yeah, the um, the the uh, bottleneck at the end was a tabulator, and uh, apparently we're not going to use that tabulator in any further elections. We're we're getting new ones in. Oh, we'll good. have new new tabulators next year, and then I've convinced the school they need to buy their own, so we'll have That's two good. of them to use. Yeah, and so those will be ones that are owned. By we won't school. be bringing them. There will in. be yeah. one by owned by East Montpelier and one by the school. Oh, good. And you think that'll make things move more smoothly? Yes. These tabulators okay. are pretty old, aren't they? They are. They can't yeah. find parts for them anymore, which is why we're getting an upgrade. Are they expensive? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. Really? Oh, they're um, about $5,000. What? Yeah. No but kidding. Considering you haven't, no one's ever bought one for 17 years, and you folks don't have to pay for it. The state, the state provides them for us. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like a worthwhile investment. I mean, if they last that long. Yeah, and we're going to have to take, we're going to take the new ones anyway. They're going to provide them for us, right? Yeah. And the, the new ones will make our jobs easier. For example, they can keep track of ballots with um, write-ins on them. Now we are manually separating out oh, that's ballots right. with write-ins. Yeah. And we may, we may be able to save money by printing our own ballots as well. Okay. Which would be cool. Right. And the other good news was we had a lot of people voting. Yeah. 800, right, or something? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, roughly a, a strong third of the possible voters in East Montpelier. So that's a pretty good turnout for a non-election year. So that's non a nice, that was a good thing. A non-election, well. Non-presidential. Non non-presidential year. Non-presidential non okay. election. Um, so is there anything else on the town meeting thing? I saw that the constable position is now going to be appointed. Is that correct? And that was about nine to one in favor of appointing versus elected. Which is uh, pretty overwhelming. Um, anything else? Carl got reelected and John did. Congratulations. Was right down to the last second. <laughs> They're voting. Don't. It must have been this huge write-in campaign. Yep. <laughs> I think the person they were voting for was called not him. <laughs> wow. Um, well, yeah, I can't go into that anymore, that there wasn't much I'm competition. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again for running such a strong campaign and winning by such an overwhelming margin. <laughs> Uh, but was there anything else that um, the town fire truck got passed overwhelming and overwhelmingly in Callis and also East Montpelier, which was nice. Yeah. Um, so that plan will move forward, which I'm sure the fire department appreciates. And I don't think I can't think of anything else of worth noteworthy. Unless someone else has something else, we can move to the next item. I don't see much. Okay, um, so the next thing we have to uh, discuss on the agenda is E, which is a town treasure report. And Don's not here that I can see. And I don't have a report in front of me. Um, I'm at a different, my different location here and the com other computer wouldn't work. So don't think I have it. Um, but is there anything that we need to know about Bruce on that? 
it looks remarkably similar to the one you saw last month. Yeah. Uh, February is a pretty lightweight month in terms of expenses. So, right. Or collections. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on that report? It's probably you've got a copy of it on, on the screen. Mm -hmm. John, I see you're looking at it. I am. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't have any, any issues with it. All right. Okay. All right, Amy's extra your nose, but that doesn't mean she's has any questions. <laughs> um, okay, so are we a little bit early for the hearing? I see Joanne Garten is here, Jeff Queto, Paul Kate. We're eight minutes early. Um, we could fit something else in. What about the annual highway financial plan that we have? Isn't that the usual plan that we have to sign off on? It's the usual plan, just in a new form this year, a stripped down form. Oh, stripped down. Okay. Yeah. There right. used to be four columns. Now there's just one. Okay. Um, I think you need a motion to pass it. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Does anybody want a motion, motion uh, make a motion? pass the annual, or do you have questions about it? I move to pass the uh, annual highway financial plan. Okay, we have a motion. Second. And we have a second by Carl. Any so just so you discussion? understand oh, the motions, <laughs> yeah. uh, you're, you're authorizing me to sign on your behalf. Very good. Of oh, I form. can sign it on Friday if you want. No, it's not not your behalf, the board's behalf. Board's behalf. Very In good. In the old-fashioned version, this had five slots, and you all signed it. Got that. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm being a little off the cuff here. Um, so the, what we're voting on is for Bruce to sign it in lieu of the select board members. Is that correct? Yes. I think so. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. Hi. 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 Bruce is going to sign it. Okay, we got rid of that. Um, we could do K because that's another rubber stamp, basically. Yep. Do we? Yes, do we? Yes. Has the road foreman signed off on this? Because I don't know if I guess I would like to hear a representation regarding our road and bridge standards. Well, it. The road and bridge standards are the ones the town adopted in 2019. Uh, and those wouldn't change for any reason. Uh, the only thing that is a wild card here is whether our network uh, inventory is still up to date and it still is this year. It may not be next year. Now, what does it mean by network inventory? Uh, that's a combo phrase because it means a couple of things. We've got a culvert inventory that's nearing the yep. end of its life. You mm -hmm. now have that, um, essentially the inventory that was done for the municipal uh, roads general permit yep. that mm -hmm. gauges every segment of every road for its compliance with the stormwater expectations. That's also part of this inventory. Yep. Uh, so basically what it is is the way it phrases it here is your conditions of the roads that's something that cvrpc does at the same time it does its culvert inventory and then you add in that erosion segment stuff so those are the three elements that we have yeah and the oldest of them is that culvert inventory that's from 2016. Okay, and the culvert inventory, just to be clear, is the culverts that actually are in the road. We're not talking about a stack of culverts back at the town garage. Correct. Correct. It's it actually is a every single culvert that we have is right is reviewed. It's reviewed so by size and condition and Infinity. whereabouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. from 2017. That is 20, 2016. Yep. Yeah. Does that constitute an up to date inventory of yeah. culverts? At, at this point, it still does. But as I said, it's um, whether it'll still be good for next year is a question. Almost certainly not for 2024. 
regional planning handles this stuff for us <laughs> and they are they, there's a deadline at the end of this year to deal with the municipal general roads permits that regional planning is sending out probably within the next month uh, updated information on on how we're all going to handle this in, in our region and we'll wait on that and move forward with it yeah. uh, so the um la 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 that 2016 that does that include an estimated cost of repair essentially what it is is um the again this is regional planning doing bought us subscriptions for the rsms service out of maine uh, and that RSMS service has all our roads in it and the costs of a average segment of road, whether it's gravel, whether it's um, uh, 24 inch, uh, excuse me, 24 foot paved road like Town Hill or a 22 foot paved road like most of the others, uh, that's all in there. And that's what essentially is considered the the uh, cost the element, right. yeah. And is that from 2016 or current? So it's updated as time goes on for when work is done. Uh, that's one of the requirements for the municipal roads general permit that came in in 2017, 2018. So okay. this the is all, oh, sorry, go on. The reason why I ask is the certificate of compliance requires that we certify several things, one of yep. which is that we certify that we do have an up-to-date up highway network in inventory, which identifies location, size, deficiencies, condition of roads, bridges, causeways, culverts, and highways related retaining walls, in class one, two, and three town highways, and estimated cost of repair. Um, so is that an up-to-date estimated cost of repair of the um roads bridges causeways culverts and highway related retaining walls as we understand the phrase yes and Is that, that you couldn't possibly ever have ever calculate the cost of repairs for every single culvert in the town and every single bridge so what happens is the towns put aside a certain amount of money every year to maintain their bridges culverts and roads and then the the planning commission comes out sends someone out and the road road form at least where i used to work the road form and would go out with a ipad and take pictures of of what areas have been worked on and repaired and and then the town puts together their budget every year what the what the uh, road foreman considers is uh, is adequate for that road they put together projects every year which we have listed here and then that is set forward to vtrans and vtrans approves it that's the way everybody does it and you can't catch up with all the culvert issues and you never know what a culvert cost is. A culvert replacement is gonna cost you. If you look at the, what we've been trying to do for the last two years on that culvert on, uh, is it on right. what roads? That's on that's Center Road. County, on Center Road, you know, the costs went up unexpectedly. So we do the best we can with the information that we have. And then we provide it to VTrans. And VTrans, if they didn't like it, they wouldn't approve it. Okay. Well, that's a good answer. Um, I don't know if it's good or not, but that's that's the answer I've always given. Yeah, and I think that was in Hardwick. It could no. have been. <laughs> that's the only way you can do it. <laughs> uh, okay, so is everyone happy with the uh, answers to the questions that you had about the consideration of annual certification of compliance? Because we need to m move on from that or? Uh, I move to authorize uh, the uh, town <clears throat> administrator to sign the town, uh, certification of compliance for town roads and bridge standards and network inventory on behalf of the select board. And we need a second for that. We'll second it. And we have a second from John. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Okay, so now, because we're around eight o'clock. Seven. Oh, seven o'clock, sorry. Uh, 
we are ready for the special joint public meeting with Town Tree Warden on East Montpelier Shade Tree Preservation Plan. So welcome all of you. I see Tree Wardens here, Paul Kate. I see Jeffrey Coetto, and I also see Joanne Garten, and I see the road foreman's iPhone. Is there anybody else from the tree committee? Oh, Steve Justice, welcome to our special hearing. Um, so I'm opening it up. Who wants to speak first? I can. Okay. Uh, Paul. So do we have to have a time when we open this? Is it? We're opening it now. Okay. Um, now, I don't know if there's people here to speak. I see some names I'm not familiar with on the screen. They may have questions about the plan. Um, I've read the plan myself. I'm sure other select board members have also. We probably have some questions discussion, but I would like to have the public first. Um, and I do see some names here. So if you're here to tune into the hearing and you will have a question of the tree warden or anybody else that's here, can you please step forward? I do see some names here that I'm not familiar with, so, so maybe they're here for the hearing. I suspect some people may be here to see what's happening and then they probably have some questions afterwards. Okay, so why don't you tell us what's happening, Paul? Besides, you don't want anybody cutting trees along the road. <laughs> <laughs> You're designating shade trees. Is it the whole area of the town, every road? Uh, well, potentially it is, sure. Okay. Well, I just, I'm just putting that question out there just to open up the discussion. Okay. So I read the plan and it looked like what the statute says is they've changed the, the statute. Um, and if you want to protect the trees along the road, you have to have a plan. And this is your plan. And it designates every tree within the town right away over four inches as a shade tree. Now, maybe my perception is off, but it looks like it's on every road in East Montpelier that has trees on. Is that correct? All yeah. the town roads. What's that? All the town roads. So yeah. it wouldn't apply to state highways, no, for no. example. Right. right. Town roads that have trees mm -hmm. along the side in the town right away, they're over four inches. Yeah. Essentially, this is not changing things very much from what existed before yeah. 2020 <clears throat> before uh, they changed the statute yeah they they changed what the tree warden's jurisdiction was uh, <clears throat> by going instead of whatever was was growing on in the town right of way <clears throat> and said well this is just for the only place the tree warden would have any jurisdiction would be where you have <clears throat> trees that were planted by the town. Well, you know, we have relatively few trees planted by the town. So essentially you'd be saying, well, the things that you've expected the town tree warden to do in the past <clears throat> wouldn't probably happen very often in this situation. <clears throat> where yeah. you don't you don't have any jurisdictions on on the road road right of ways, which has always been the case in the past. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it doesn't doesn't really change that part of it <clears throat> so much. And you know, there's sometimes there's some contrary wording, if you will, or just interpretation. <clears throat> in the past that, you know, they were trying to straighten out some of it and some of it didn't, didn't get straightened out, uh, <clears throat> you know, to the satisfaction of those of us who are trying to do the work. So, <clears throat> so essentially we're, we're not changing the jurisdiction. Uh, we're just taking advantage of what they put in there is probably an afterthought, <laughs> you know, to, to deal with trees that weren't planted by the town. Right. 
So you no, know, if you if you're in Burlington, you know the trees were probably planted by the town for the most part. Right. Yep. <laughs> but in most of rural Vermont, that's not true, and you have relatively few trees that were <clears throat> planted uh, by the town. They may have been planted by the farmers back in the eighteen late eighteen hundreds. And that's how we got a lot of our large roadside aisles of maples. But, but that would have been, I'm sure the town wasn't back in that and there weren't tree wardens <laughs> dealing with that at that time. So uh, <clears throat> that has a different background. So what, you, what are you trying to interpret that, I guess is the question. Uh, and in this case, the League of Cities and Towns uh, lobbied for for this arrangement well because the confusion of the definition of trees that are planted by the town so basically it's very hard to prove that the trees were planted by the tree by the town along the roads so to protect those trees the big maples etc they said you have to have a plan if you have a plan then you can designate those as shade trees and then they're protected and the tree warden can say I yes or no, correct? I mean, if you just said, oh, we're just gonna protect the trees by the statute, which is the trees planted by the town, there's very few in East Montpelier that are planted by the town, Almost very, very few. So anyway, okay. uh, so it cleared, they were trying to clear it up because it was confusing before. This is less confusing and passes off the duties a little more clearly. So basically, if this plan passes, though, I'm, I'm a little queasy about it because it takes rights away from landowners that have trees along the road. That I understand that before 2020, that was the same. It was the same case. You always had to call the tree warden to cut a tree. Now, if you had sections of roads that were not in the shade tree preservation plan, the landowner would have a little more right to cut the tree that was in the town right away. Essentially, all you're doing is, is checking with the tree warden to see yeah. if you've got a problem with it. And a lot of yeah. times you wouldn't. Right. <clears throat> but it, it's also, of course, at this point, you know, the town's roads are all busier than they used to be and stuff like this. And and the, the road foreman, I'm sure, doesn't want people out in the roads unnecessarily, especially if they aren't skilled and know what they're doing. And you know, you yeah. would have a public hazard there. But you see, that's yeah. what that's what happens when you <clears throat> you're trying to update things, and the whole situation has changed over that period of time. Yeah. So, but you you still you still have your town. <clears throat> right of way, which the yeah. the owners own the trees, or or best we can tell. I don't know how that would work out in all court cases. Because I don't know <laughs> <laughs> how it's worked, but uh, <clears throat> it's not something that that you would normally have a an issue with because the the landowner, I mean, the town holds the easement yeah. to, to deal with the right. maintaining the roads and, and yeah. ditches and all this kind of stuff. Right. And so <clears throat> that in, in a way, that's a carve out from right. the landowners. But instead of making it into something that's a tight regulation, it says stay the hang out of the road <clears throat> and we do all the dealing uh, in, the, in a situation like this, you have supposedly decent advice from, from a tree warden about whether, whether that's the best thing to be doing there, wise to do or not. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, from things like what's the health of the tree, uh, you know, what's the hazard uh, <clears throat> for 
working on the road, all of that would be taken into account by the, the tree warden. And obviously would, if there was a serious issue with it and you had to appeal it and all of this kind of business, then the new folks would be, <clears throat> be the ones calling the shots. But, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, I, I like your answers, Paul. Um, but I want other people to be able to ask you some stuff besides just me. So, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> By the way, uh, yeah. anytime anybody has questions, you know, my phone number's in the book, <clears throat> and I'm happy to. <laughs> to talk with you or look at a situation or whatever, because I think that's how we should make something like this work. <clears throat> it's not whether you have jurisdiction and hence, you know, power <laughs> to do whatever you think is the thing to do. What we're trying to do is work with landowners and uh, and the town and be good neighbors. Uh, but sometimes there's, there's reasons that you have to do something or there's, uh, there may be just more information that's needed, you know, as to what, what really makes sense or not. You know, we're not just looking to make work. I can tell you that. We've got enough things to do with EAB and <laughs> all of that. To, uh, you know, and, and there's certainly there would be places uh, which we would looking at to actually do some test uh, work with this and, you know, where we think we actually stand a good chance of, of making some of these aisles of trees <clears throat> that aren't 120 years old or more, but will last for the next 100 years uh, instead of just having it be all wild down the sides of the road uh, and and just a, a headache for the road crew because so much stuff is falling apart it hasn't been maintained uh, <clears throat> and so shoot anybody who's got questions and and by the way Jeff Queto has <clears throat> done a lot of the uh, work with writing this up and everything. And so <clears throat> he may be able to answer questions and stuff that, uh, that I'm not as tight to as he is. I'm probably better off dealing with the trees themselves instead of the paper that the words are written on. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Paul. Um, it looks like Steve, do you, did you wanna say something? No, I just, I, I just took. Hi, Steve. So, um, Guthrie, you're on here, right? Yes. Did do you have any thoughts about this shade tree preservation plan put together by Jeff Queto and Paul Kate, etc.? I I do like the. The, the aspect of the pre no need of a tree warden. I do like that Paul has to be involved to an ask to a certain amount. Uh, but like you, I think what you were getting at Seth, having all the trees in town that are over four inches considered a shade, shade tree seems a little aggressive. Um, yeah. There's plenty of species that I wouldn't even consider a shade tree and they grow rapidly anyway. Right, they don't have any value, and right. such. Um, so that's kind of my catch twenty two of it. I do like to have Paul involved. I think Paul will vouch for that. I I use him quite often as far as getting permission to take out or remove anything with any size to it. Um, but it does make me nervous to think of all the all the trees along every bit of road. That are over four inches. That's yeah. a lot of trees. I mean, we just went through into the ash tree inventory similar yeah. to this, and that was a couple thousand. 
So right. All of a sudden, I, I, I'm the same way. I I like the concept, but then I think to myself, oh, those two dead maples are right on the edge of May, uh, up on Snow Hill Road, right on the edge of the town, right away. Geez, you know. But you know, I suppose that you know Paul is not far away, and we could come to some kind of you know discussion on the trees, and we would get clearance to cut them. I assume with your Guthrie's involvement and Paul's, you know, so the discussion doesn't really hurt. It's just that it is daunting. So anyway, I see Carl with his hand up. Carl, are you muted? Yeah. Judith had her hand up first. Oh, who did? Judith. Okay. Oh, Judith. Oh, go for it. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, what's the extent of the right of way beyond the road border? Like how far beyond the edge of the road? Traveled does the right away. It's not necessarily anything to do with the edge of the road. It's from the right. center of the road. Um, and it's either three rods or four rods throughout town. It's mostly three rods, isn't it? Uh, some roads are four. Are there? No so that's yeah. 49 and a half feet. That's three rods is 49 right. and a half feet. Right. Right. Four rods is 64 or whatever it is, something like that. Yeah. 16 feet to a rod about. So... Yeah, 16 and a half feet, the, actually. The so majority 60, of the 60. roads that this would apply to would yes. be three rods, which three is rods. the... 50 yeah. feet. 50 feet. So, so 25 feet from the center. 90. So 25 feet from the center of the road, Judith. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, on average with your three rod um, road... Right away. Right away. Yeah. No, three rod um, right away. How, I mean... Uh, for the majority of the roads, or can you even say this, that you'd be looking at, you know, four, four feet, two feet no. beyond the road surface? At least, I, I understand what he's saying. I'm just trying to address your concern that um, if there's a property owner that might think, golly, this tree is on my property, but in reality, it's also within the right of way for them to envision the location of the, the extent of the right of way. It yeah, so it's 12 or 12 to 15 feet, depending on the width of the road. Right. That's like up on your end of North Street that you live on, there's a lot of right of way outside of the road. Yeah. Okay. That, it, that you would be shocked if you went and measured it. Okay. Thank you. But where I am, the road's around 25 feet. Mm -hmm. So that's half of it. So you measure, you know, 12 feet off the edge of the road is about extent of the right of way about you know because we measure it often so, um carl yeah so seth you started out by asking questions for questions from townspeople and i, I think yeah. it was it was a good move to allow a presentation from the committee to get the ball rolling here the select yep. board and the people involved in putting this together have already had an opportunity at a select board meeting to to discuss this uh, we do have, as you pointed out, some names that are not familiar with us. Could we yeah. just open it up one more time and just be quiet for, yeah. a, for a while, those of us who've already discussed this, to allow some room for other people to ask questions? Sounds good. Who'd like to go first? Yep, I see Joanne Garden's hand is up. Hi, all. I'm Joanne. I work with the Vermont Urban Community Forestry Program, so I'm not an East Montpelier resident. This is just a clarification. Um, I've heard that the term thrown around a bit today, trees four inches and greater. And I just wanted to clarify for folks who haven't like worked with tree size as much. It's not four inches in height, but I just triple checked <laughs> the statute that it's four inches in diameter, like standing height. Just in case that was a sort of a confusing phrase. So the four inches is four inches diameter, which could yep. be a very tall tree <laughs> as opposed to a four inch tall tree. Yeah, and technically yep. that's at four and a half feet above the ground. Okay. But where you measure that. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Joanne. Oh, I see Chelsea Blackwell. Hi. Colin, <clears throat> perhaps? Colin, yeah. Colin Blackwell. Uh, 
trying to figure this thing out here, but. Well, you're coming um, through when you have a beautiful picture. So I think you figured it out. All right, good. Yeah. Yeah, I talked with Paul uh, over the last little bit here about <clears throat> some of this stuff and uh, just barely getting familiar with with the tree law myself, but I was pretty uh, concerned with looking at the proposal. For one reason, the big one was just what what a burden it might be for a tree warden to uh, take on all those trees, um, assuming that <clears throat> if you put everything in uh, Appendix D as every tree in town, boy, you could be out there every day looking at a tree. Um, and the other concern is just, you do have some landowners who are doing work uh, safely and, and getting, a lot, getting thinnings done, moving trees that just saves the town a lot of money. And you'd be losing that ability too. So I just like to hear more about how you're gonna classify the, the shade tree law. Well, let's look at it this way. <clears throat> There's not, you've got all these trees that are within a town right of way, but how many of them are a problem <clears throat> or a potential problem, uh, particularly back a ways back of the ditch, you know, at the out, outside of those uh, right of way widths. So a lot of those trees <clears throat> typically would never it would never be an issue uh you know would we if somebody wants to be cutting trees down there would we like to know about it yes we would simply so that you know guthrie knows <clears throat> that there's work going on there but it doesn't mean that that the tree warden is going to be out supervising everything up anywhere in town. Uh, it's particularly the ones that are, <clears throat> you know, closest to the road or have, you know, leaning right out over the road and their species that are prone to problems, stuff like that. Uh, other than that, you, you probably wouldn't even know where we were doing work. <laughs> in a lot of town because there's no way <clears throat> you're gonna you know if you consider that the inventory that we worked on with Joanne <clears throat> and our volunteers just to figure out the ash trees that were potential problems for the road uh, in our best judgment uh, amounts to about 2,700 trees <clears throat> well that's a, that's a lot of trees to get down in a relatively short period of time in the case of this emerald ash borer. But here we're talking about a number of other species which don't have some of the drawbacks in terms of uh, snapping off, you know, a foot in diameter <clears throat> and dropping stuff in the road. That, you know, the maple trees and the elm trees that we all grew up with. Uh, <clears throat> tend to shed their limbs more or less straight down. And <clears throat> so probably half of the <laughs> width of the right of way on each side is, isn't even gonna be a, anything that we'd ever deal with in a lot of places in town, especially places where you've got uh, either a distinct hedgerow that doesn't have trees behind it, or you have <clears throat> what used to be pasture and is now forest, and <clears throat> you've got enough trees that are between those and the road that that's not apt to be so much of a problem either. And so those are going to not be dealt with by, by the roadside committee or the tree warden. So it's not like you're, you're 
going to tangle with every tree uh, that's under four inches, uh, over four inches, I'm, I mean. Does that make any sense? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it does. Uh, I, I don't have a good feel for, <clears throat> you know, how much the tree warden, you know, I know in the past it's been a pretty limited type of mm -hmm. um, input that the tree warden gets involved with, uh, you know, certain trees or, or landowners mm -hmm. who might have a question about it. Um, but the shade tree definition, you know, really implies that the town's in complete control of the tree. So if you change the definition of all the trees, you're just going to open up for a lot more disputes and uh, uh, all the trees as opposed to what? Well, as, as opposed to right now, they're not the trees on most of the roadsides. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're not shade trees. Well, they're not planted by the town. So the so, statute so, defined it. The new statute defined that the jurisdiction by the tree warden was just over trees that were planted by the town in the town right away. So this is why they're coming up with a plan because it extends their jurisdiction over all trees rather than just trees planted in the tree right away. So that's what the new statute says. Under the old rule, which is before 2020, the town uh, tree warden had jurisdiction over all the trees in the town right away, whether they were planted by the town or not. Uh, but it was pretty gray. So they tried to clear it up by making the de definition more defined. So the town uh, tree warden, et cetera, has come up with this plan, as you point out, uh, Colin, that protects all the trees over four inches in the town right away and calls them a shade tree. And you're exactly right. That's true. So let's, uh, let's take up Colin's question uh, and refer back to the time before 2020, where we had, uh, uh, before this new legislation was passed, where we had essentially uh, the same conditions as we'd have under the plan, as you've described it. Uh, Paul, as tree warden uh, for many years during that time, did you feel er overburdened by the number of calls you got out to go and look at trees? No, no, how often, not at how, all. How often do you think that happened? No. Oh. Probably a dozen, 15 times. Total or per year? Oh, well, you know, sometimes we'd go out and we'd ride around to different parts of town where the, there was particular questions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, we might, in the course of that, look at a few, quite a few trees, but, uh, <clears throat> but in terms of the number of times that I was called in to do that, Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you I've got to hang a lot more time <laughs> tied up in this business in the last two or three years than we ever had before. But I still, old dashboard. I still, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, the original uh, Rural Roadside Committee, you know, talking about other factors that, that we... <clears throat> should be dealing with but right. uh, okay but i would say no uh, and i i wouldn't foresee that changing okay. <laughs> because so much of that is <clears throat> uh as i say it's trees that are over in the back or they're leaning the other way or or whatever and it's you know you don't do what you don't need to do mm -hmm. So it'd be fair to refer to the town road uh, tree policy as uh, benign neglect. You don't know, do what you don't need to do. <laughs> but if, if something's a problem, you take care of it. Well, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you ask Guthrie and he can tell you that uh, <clears throat> you end up with 
uh, things that you just have to solve at the moment. <laughs> and, uh, you know, basically what this would do would give us a little tighter handle on, on dealing with <clears throat> areas where we actually have considerable uh, stems that are a problem right. uh, and get them dealt with before it's in the middle of a snowstorm or a windstorm or something and they're, they're down all over the place. You right. know, because we're trying, we're trying to, <clears throat> where it's feasible and it's not feasible everywhere in town by any means, but <clears throat> to actually grow trees just like the farmers did back in the late 1800s, they wanted trees there. And, uh, and then be able to see that you had a future of a lot of those trees being much healthier and more species diversity <clears throat> and better able to withstand the kinds of stresses that they have now that they didn't have in the late 1800s uh, <clears throat> that make it hard for trees. Uh, you know, and, and you can you can call it benign neglect neglect. I guess it has has been to a to a great degree if you're considering uh, the majority of the roads in town. But uh, <clears throat> I don't think that was intentional. I think it was just that's the way it happened to yeah. work out. Yeah. And then thank you. And then getting to, to Colin's second point about uh, landowners who uh, can do a good job at maintaining the trees along their roadside. Uh, let me see if I can address that, uh, maybe um, address some other issues too, just uh, in the bargain uh, by asking, um, prior to 2020 with the tree warden system, how many complaints has a town gotten from landowners that it's just not working, the tree warden has gotten in the way of the way they manage, uh, want to manage their uh, their their trees along the roadway, and you know what sort of complaints have those be, been? And I'm not just asking you, Paul, uh, but anybody who's who's uh, fielded those complaints, uh, who's who's on the call today. I'll step up to the plate on that one. Um, sure, that's kind of what I was going to get at with Colin's comments as well. Uh, at some point, just the policy alone may cause people to not want to ask or have someone come out, they're just going to do it because you're not going to glue a tree back up. <laughs> so I'm asking historically, what sort of complaints have we gotten about the way that the system has worked in the past? I, I haven't gotten necessarily complaints, but they've been asked if there's ways to work around um, having to deal with the tree warden at all because they're worried that it might be something that would cause a hearing and times and delays and Usually when someone wants to remove a tree off their property, they want to do it now rather than at some other point. So it sounds like we need some education if we're going to pass this. We need some education to landowners that that uh, removing a tree is uh, by talking to the tree warden is not a very onerous or complicated process. Generally speaking. Yeah. Bruce, you've been in the town office for, for a long time. What have you heard in terms of complaints about the tree warden system prior to 2020? I'm going to go back to something that Paul said that he didn't really get called out all that often. Uh, I'm not sure people asked. Uh, right. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't think it was a big concern. Uh, and the, the shade tree concept was not terribly well understood. And I don't think people worried about it. So the answer your question, no one in the yeah. 11 plus years I've been doing this. So, yeah. so Carl, just to ask you that question, since it seems like you're on this, on this trajectory about what was going on, what's going to go on is slightly different. I, I think that we're looking at tighter regulation. I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but we're not going back to that same system, though it looks similar. It's a tighter system of regulating the trees along the road. That's my perception, and I think that's Collins also. But there are other people here from the general public. I, 
wouldn't it be nice if we could hear from them too? I'm not sure if there are other people here, but I would like to open up to some other people. Colin has given us some input and I think he might have some other things to say, but I see other people here. Do you, does, are there members of the public here that would like to speak about this tree thing? I guess not. So, okay. So, so back to Colin. What do you What are you thinking, Colin, on the answers that you've gotten and Carl's fleshing out the question? Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> Let me check. Am I on right now? Yeah, yes. you're on. Can you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um. Well, I I my first thought after reading, you know, the proposal was. Could it be done in a way that present, presents a new proposal with um, objectives the town has to have a shade tree pr preservation plan without the broad de defining of all trees, shade trees? And so you say, well, because the thing is, it's still the town right away. <clears throat> so. The tree warden's job is going to be the same if that if a tree is in that right of way and it's a hazard to the public. It doesn't matter if it's a shade tree or not. It's still the tree warden and then the select board. Beyond that, ha, as far as I can understand, has the authority. Um, maybe that's the whole issue here. That it, it's somehow written that that's that authority doesn't exist anymore. But I. I would assume that in town right away, you you still maintain that authority. Therefore, you know, the proposal could be more, not just protecting that authority, but to promote the type of maintenance that you, that the town would like to see. Are, are you saying, but what, I see what they're saying and what they're trying to clear up here is that de what the town is doing now with a new plan is designating every tree over four inches that's in the town right away as a shade tree. And when it has that designation, every single tree that's over four inches would require the tree warden to come out and look at that tree. So that's what you're saying, Colin, it seems like the, there's, it's broad, is that correct? That's a broad definition of every single tree over four inches. It's in the town right away. That's a broad definition. Yeah, because when you look when you look at the the shade tree requirements for you know so say you know people read that and they're trying to follow the rules and and they say okay I gotta call tree warden you know. It, it really you're setting you I think you're setting everyone up for you know more a lot more work both the tree warden and the landowner um, and it, it kind of it's kind of just saying you know everyone in town is is not competent to look at trees well I, I'm exaggerating here, but I just, my thought process is let's maybe look at some other proposals that might get out some of the maintenance schedules without just clearly defining it as a shade tree. Yeah. And, and, and otherwise we may end up needing a, uh, a tree warden position that's, uh, something that a volunteer won't want to do. Okay. And that was the, that, that concern is just the burden thing is what, you know, how much work is it going to be? We already have the emerald bat ash stuff going on. Um, and then future cost to the town. Okay, I've got a question for Joanne. Are you there somewhere? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, she's here. <clears throat> what is your 
sense of <clears throat> how shade tree is construed here. Sure, yeah, to, to kind of go back to something Colin was just talking about, um, there's, there's a fine distinction there that if the trees, uh, all, all trees over four inches diameter at breast height are designated as, as shade trees, which is what's proposed, then yes, the tree warden needs to be involved. Um, and it may be coming to look at the tree, it may be a phone call, it may be all kinds of things. But the, the difference, if those trees are not designated as shade trees, um, you're right, the town does still manage the right of way, but the tree warden doesn't have to be involved. It may be that Guthrie and Paul end up chatting anyway, but there's no um, like requirement that if those are if those are not designated as shade trees, then the tree warden does not have to be involved. Um, so that's where the distinction is of designating them as shade trees or not. There's definitely plenty of ways and reasons to take down shade trees, particularly if they're hazardous in some way, if they're part of a infestation control program, like like we've been talking about the ash trees and managing those. Um, hopefully before the Emerald Ash Borer gets to them. So there are, um, I think there's also the kind of quick pass for trees that are in conflict with state or federal statutes. I'm guessing that's referring to like a municipal roads general permit kind of thing. Um, so in that way, the tree warden is involved and can acknowledge that, yes, this is hazardous or yes, this is part of our infestation program. Um, but you're you're completely right that the right of way trees are managed by the town, whether or not they're shade trees. It's just that extra layer of the tree warden being involved, and and frankly, I think like the intent of a lot of this work is to put a value on public trees, and that term public trees is not defined. <laughs> so, but that there there is a public benefit to some trees over other trees. Um, simply because they're in a public right of way or in public spaces. So it's kind of, a, I guess, like to back, a, back away from the who has permission to do what, it's really getting at this idea that some trees may be managed differently than others because they provide a public good. Um, and I absolutely see the concern of a landowner maybe wanting to do something that um, that person cannot just go ahead and do without talking to the tree warden. But at the same time, there's a lot of ways and a lot of reasons to remove trees. And I think um, Paul was, was getting at that a little bit. I don't wanna put any more words in your mouth, Paul, but about species selection and which trees will grow to be the larger trees. Um, and then hopefully, you know, lots of discussion. If, if the question from the landowner is, I would like to take down all the trees here because they are shading my field or what or I can't see that for the view or any of those things, um, then the tree warden is still consulted and the tree warden then um, may say, well, you know, I don't see anything wrong with these trees, so I can't just authorize you to take them down, but we can put this out for public comment. And, and then sort of the public in general is able to weigh in on how those trees are managed. Thank you, Joanne. Mm -hmm. That was that cleared it up a bit, right, Colin? So, if you objected to the trees that you want to cut, then you could have a public hearing, and then the people could weigh in on whether to let you cut those trees down on your property that were in the town right away. Yeah, if I can go ahead. I think if the town had the interest of saying. We don't want to have more than four trees taken down on one strip of road without a hearing or um, that'd be one way to go. I mean, the, I think the, the state has left this proposal thing up to the town so they can decide how they want to, how the town wants to do it. And so it, you could get real creative with it, but it, it is complicated because you, it turns around and catch you in a different, you know, you might have someone who, who really wants trees and, you know, doesn't want to see a single tree taken down. And that's, that's important for that landowner. Um, so I can see why it's difficult. 
but I just, I think the broad sweeping, let's call them all shade trees, you know, historically that term has been for a, a tree that a city planted and it gave that city or village the right to, you know, it, it's a fine to, to damage that tree, even, even to take an ax and, you know, put a mark on it, you could get fined. And so, you know, how much do you want to bring in of that to just our back roads and our, you know, country road setting? Yeah, well, um, so we've kind of used up time, but I hate to end this discussion because it's pretty interesting. Um, should we have another hearing on the tree thing? Because it seems like there's still more to say or what do, I mean, the next item on our agenda is we were gonna review the hearing and we've used up that time too, not in a bad way though. Um, and what it says on agenda is consideration of plan adoption, but I just think there's too many questions for us really to adopt the plan right now. I mean, what do you think the rest of the select board? Or I, Steve Justice has his hand up, I think. Is that you, Steve? I, I see Crystal Rose Pierce with the hand up. Okay. Said well, anything Steve, yet. Does, Steve has his hand up too, but. No, um, I, I, I not intentionally. I don't know if I've okay. got if I, <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, so we'll move to the next person that has a hand up. You said it's Crystal Rose. Yep, she's got a hand up too. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm yeah. Crystal Rose Pierce. I'm, I live in Shelburne actually, so I'm here more as an observer. Um, I'm very interested in governance around the state. So I'm just observing and, and listening to the process. Um, I'm an advocate for technology and for technology platforms and how we can create more efficiency within government. And I'm uh, just as a, a question on how you plan to implement a potential new role as the tree warden. If you have considered to use a, uh, an online platform, uh, particularly a blockchain based platform where you could do a, uh, a voting system digitally. Um, <clears throat> I am a technologist, so I build AI and blockchain based products. And there is a free AI that exists where you can take a photo of a, a leaf of a tree and it will identify the species. So it might be easier to be able to send it through at least one layer of technology before uh, going through a person and then going through the process of voting and, and having to have a town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I just wanted to put that out there and, and ask if you had considered uh, maybe building a technology platform or if the city has given you a budget to do that. Um, well, we haven't considered that yet, but you know, if we implement the plan, obviously we'll have to get more um, technology involved because it looks like it's going to be a more complicated um, situation to deal with in the future. It, it'll be many calls and we'll probably have to move some more technology. Uh, there'll be more hearings, et cetera, et cetera. This is following in line with Colin was saying. So that's a good thought that maybe we should be uh, moving in that direction, but we don't really know yet because we still have to finish up this hearing and then decide what we're going to do with the plan that's been brought forth. So Thank you for that, Crystal. And we'll definitely keep that in mind. Thank you. Yes. Um, so just to move along, because it's getting late-ish. Uh, yeah, Seth, can I just mention yeah, something? Absolutely. Um, I heard the word hearing a few times. And just yeah. to clarify things, under the pre-2020 yeah. process, the tree warden had to do a written decision and hold a hearing, which is what we were doing with the ash trees before. Yes. Yes. But with the current process, um, the tree warden makes a decision without yes. a hearing. And the only yes. case where you have a hearing is on appeal of yes. his decision to the select board. So yes. normally the process doesn't involve a hearing. And I'd look at a, a more simple process uh, given that. And okay. Rel relative to workload, I just want to say, I mean, if we look at, at the history, I, I don't think there's a tremendous amount of private tree cutting along our, our roads. You know, certainly the Road Foreman's active with tree cutting, 
but yeah. um, I don't see this as something really onerous. And yeah. we had talked before about um, getting a deputy tree warden to help Paul, which would kind of you know, spread out some of the workloads. So I, I don't think it's a problem. And okay. you know, my main concern, I mean, the way we structured this was to try to provide blanket protection for these trees yeah. as they were protected before by doing the four yeah. inch and larger on all roads. Yeah. And it's just sort of a free fire zone right now um, in terms yeah. of landowners doing it. So if you don't provide that blanket protection, then you just aren't protecting the trees. So. Yeah. Oh, and, and you're not protecting your options for the future. That's yeah, yeah. That's really the basis for uh, some of the work that we're trying to do is to hopefully cut down on maintenance in the future by yeah. planning it out a little bit. Which, so, which is what, sorry, sorry, what we were doing with U32 in the hedgerow there, um, the Withens property in the center we're trying to actively manage um, these roadsides. So, um, you know, looking towards the future, uh, we won't have these conflicts, so. But we're so, certainly so, not gonna be doing what we're doing in the center on all the roadsides everywhere in town. <laughs> right. You know, uh, so. You got your hand up. Tom. Yes, so Seth, you were asking for procedural suggestions. I, yes. I, I, I think that uh, this committee has done a good job of putting together a, a plan that uh, that seems to work well for the town for uh, protecting public trees. And I recognize that our discussion is not over, even though we've used up the time allotted for both the hearing and our discussion of the hearing. Uh, and from what I understand from Bruce's select board memo, uh, there's not a real time crunch after this hearing for uh, when we adopt this plan or, or take further action on it. So given that we have uh, some other significant things to talk about tonight, I would recommend that uh, we uh, move on and, and schedule not a, a further hearing. Um, we've, we've done the hearing, but we schedule further discussion in the select board, which of course, everybody's welcome to come back to and, and join us on of this uh, at, at a meeting in, in the next uh, month or six weeks. <clears throat> Can I ask Bruce a procedural question? Um, seeing as there are people who have participated in the hearing or at least attended the hearing, um, I think they may have to be notified of the decision. So I don't know if you have to like pass the clipboard around. So Bruce, you're, you're muted, I think. It's not that kind of hearing, Jeff. Okay. Uh, the, there is no... Um, decision that needs to be disseminated. Uh, this is just a hearing for exactly what we're doing, getting public feedback. Yeah. And okay. you don't have to respond to it at all down the road. But can we have another hearing or extend this hearing to another date? You could do that, or you could do right. what Carl said and just come back and have another discussion on it. You had to have a public hearing. Okay. Yeah. So this is the yeah. public hearing. That's a required public hearing. Yeah. Right. And so now I didn't you can miss... come back and talk about it. Okay. So we don't have any time to talk about it now. That's the thing. All right. Seth? Yes. So, yeah. so just, uh, Paul, uh, Seth, I think you probably missed most of what I said. I, I the... missed it because yeah. I got something. Right. After. Right. So what All I was right. suggesting for uh, your question of procedure was to, um, to stop the discussion for tonight and yes. then ske schedule a further discussion, not a hearing uh, yes. extension, but a further discussion within yeah. the next month or six weeks. That's what I'd like to do. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We just don't have it all wrapped up like we could or should. Um, so Paul had his what's hand up. I think Paul, Kate had okay. his hand up. Um, Paul, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Uh, well, I was just going to say uh, <clears throat> we had talked about going out i believe looking at the corner of jacobs road and uh oh. sparrow farm road yes for a field trip and if we put those can we put those two things together and anybody who wants to come can come because we'll we can as we're looking at that site you know we can talk about some of the things that we were talking about tonight we uh, can but i don't think that's going to be the end of the discussion no, um, no, I'm, 
I, I hope the discussion never ends. But as far as it no, get this right, no, but ends tonight though. <laughs> but I, I just, yeah. Yeah. I just yeah, think I mean, that uh, we we need the the give and take, you know, and have people understand what it is we're actually trying to do, and how we're trying to align things with Guthrie and and everything else. And there's a lot more to it than you probably realize. And so I'm just offering that sometimes, uh, not that that's the, the answer for everything, but the field trip may, might be quite useful to some people to see what okay. we're really looking at out there. Okay, that sounds good. And we'll definitely schedule that trip. But as far as the adoption of the plan goes, we'll still have right. another discussion sure. about that. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna close the hearing for the moment or for now or for, for tonight. Okay. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you. Actually, um, Seth, I think you're closing the hearing period, correct? Yes. yes. I'm closing the uh, hearing period because. Thank you. But there'll still be um, time to discuss this publicly about this plan. It doesn't necessarily have to be a warned hearing, but on our warning, we will put the discussion out there. It will be on our agenda, and the public will be able to tune in and talk about the ramifications of the plan. So I'm not, I'm just trying to make sure that everyone still has a chance to have input on this important discussion for the future. So for tonight, the hearing, for now or forever, the hearing is done. Recording stopped. <laughs> oh, recording stopped. Recording okay. in progress. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we are not going to do that. So we have to have the conversation with Planning Commission. Zach? Yep. Is Zach still here? Yep, I'm here, Seth. Okay. Um, I'm proposed zoning regulation amendments. Yeah, so I'll try to I'll try to keep this brief. Um, so we had we held our public hearing on our proposed zoning you know, amendments on February. February 17th um, to take public comment. Yeah, you know, as a reminder, those the big the big groups of changes were a large group of changes to implement the um, East Montpelier Village Master Plan, some smaller changes to address change in statute, and then you know, some changes to address those identified issues where the the current regs didn't appear to be working particularly well. Um, they, we, we did not have huge attendance at the hearing, but we did have we did receive some comments. Um, particularly particular areas some some disappointment that we had not done more to address strip zoning um, or strip development that was because when we had when we had really scaled back the changes following the you know following the first attempt to change the zoning with when using the consultant and we got feedback that it was too much too fast we decided to really limit things to the village and to technical changes that were causing problems and so that was dropped at that point um, received some comments about stormwater runoff and um, about noise pollution. I believe the noise pollution one was more. We'll come up again with cell towers based on some conversations I've had with that particular commenter outside of the hearing. Um, the other, the, the, the largest area of comment that we received was about the question of were we, were we reducing the setbacks too much? Um, you know, we did, you know, that's an area that where, where a, signif you know, a significant amount of work has come to the DRB with, you know, with wa for waivers and variances because the setbacks are quite large in some parts of the town. And so those were cut pretty significantly. Um, that was, that those comments were from one individual. Um, we did discuss them, decided ultimately that that was, that, 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 we, that we were in agreement that it made, that it made sense to bring, bring the setbacks down quite a bit. Um, we also, you know, from a member of the DRB, we got, we received some tech, you know, some technical comments. Um, you know, one one error that was caught, one area where our def, yeah, you know, where the regs weren't really clear because we hadn't defined things well, and so we did go back and update definitions to try to you know to try to better to to make the you know, the regs clearer for when the DRB needs to interpret these. Um, Obviously, I will have respond to any questions you have, but I am I am here to formally hand this over to you now because this is this is the point at which the planning commission hands this over to the select 
board so that you can hold your own hearings you know, on it and then make a decision on how to you know, ultimately how to act on the proposal. That sounds good to me. I can't wait to look them all over actually. Yeah. So we, is that, what's that Zach? So we'll certainly be available for questions if you, you know, if you have oh, yeah. them. Well, I assume that you'll show up at our meeting or hearings, hearing, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Um, so does anybody have any questions of Zach at this point? Yes, Scott Hess does. I do not have any questions, but I just wanna make a quick comment that um, I've been on the planning commission for about nine years or so. And I just wanna compliment Zach on his tremendous amount of work. And Julie Potter, he had really big shoes to fill. Um, Julie Potter had done a tremendous job and, and uh, numerous other people before him. Um, and Gene Vissering. <clears throat> and anyway, I just I just want to I just want the select board to know as a member of the a longstanding member of the planning, I guess now a longstanding member, that Zach, that Zach has just done a tremendous job and that you have a tremendous chairman as um as the leader of the planning commission. And I just wanted the select board to be aware of that. Hey, sorry, I was on with Jonathan. I guess you have your Okay. Um, well, thank you, Scott. And that's that's nice of you to acknowledge all the people that have worked on this. I know there's been a lot of hard work put on to it. It's taken a long time. And you guys, everyone's worked hard on it. And Zach, thank you for bringing it all up. And we'll definitely look at it with great interest. I myself am very interested in these uh, new amendments to the plan. I can't wait to see them. And uh, thank, thank you again for bringing it out and all your hard work. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Scott's here, Zach's here. They've all worked on this. Dylan, it looks like Judith has a, Judith has a question. That? Judith, do you have a question? I do. Um, yes. Thank you, and I, um, I appreciate all of the effort and hard work and I can appreciate how much time went into it. Um, one question that I had was, did is there any, um, um, any provision regarding an enhanced energy plan for the town? Um, I don't know if that's in the new uh, regulations, amendments, is it, Zach? No, so actually I, um, I'll, I, I have a couple other things that I would like to just give a you know, one or two minute update you know, to you on, one of which is the enhanced energy plan. Okay. Um, okay. But, I'll, but I'll see if there are any other questions on the zoning before we switch topics. Right, because the zoning and the energy plan are two different pots, right? Correct. The energy plan yeah. would be part of the town plan, not part right. of the. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And so, yes, I'm not seeing a lot of the, of the questions. So, so Judith, more, to answer your question more directly, we have, you know, this, the planning commission has just taken up the, um, the energy plan. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are working, we are starting to work on that now. Um, the other, the other piece that we are, currently wrapping up is the the town plan amendments to deal with cell to hours that is we will be holding a hearing on that at the beginning of may um, and then we'll hopefully be getting that over to you we you know, we decided to keep that moving forward it will be a little bit you know it'll be a bit of you know here's you know here's a piece for the town plan and then here's another piece of the town plan because the energy <clears throat> and what would also be an amendment um, given the governor's focus on you know, increasing the number of you know, cell towers in the state, we thought it was wise, given how much work has been done on that, to to finalize that and move it forward. Um, the the cell tower section is modeled on the current, you know, in a lot of ways, on the current energy section of the town plan, which do, I think does a good job of both saying where, where are areas that we don't want this kind of infrastructure, but also providing guidance on where we do and where we think it would make sense, so that. Um, you know, both so that there is some opportunity for that development and also to basically give guidance to, to developers about what kind of evidence we're looking for, what kind of sites would make sense so that we can try to, you know, try to make things work. Um, Does that uh, answer your question, Judith, on the, okay. And the, well, and thank the, you, Zach. 
Yeah, you're welcome. And the last bug I'll just put in your ear is that we, you know, in starting to work on the energy plan, it's, you know, we're noticing there are some areas of the implementation that might make sense for a conservation commission to look at. And so I, I know that that is something that was considered, you know, you know, that was voted on in town a couple of years ago, and then COVID got in the way of everything. But it might be it might be worth thinking about getting that moving again because some of these planning you know, needs potentially could use the conservation commission. Yeah, good point. We'll definitely be looking at that. I know that kind of fell through the cracks, but I thought of it myself lately. It's like, oh, we didn't really do anything with that. Uh, Okay, so is that um, is that all you want to share with us now, Zach? That's all I've got. Yeah, I can. I think ba based on time, if you would like to hear more about the the cell tower work, I could certainly come back at some point. Um, I don't. Yeah. I don't know how much information you want prior to that hearing, but I I realize that you're behind schedule and we'll do try to do no, my no, part to I get mean, you back. So you're saying that you have language that you're working on for the cell tower regulation? Yes, um, at this. At this yeah. point, there is an amendment that has where there is text that is ready to go. Okay, so you're thinking it would be useful to us to see that before the hearing. I would like to see that myself before the hearing. I don't want you to read it to me right now, but I would like that um, text sent to the select board if possible. Uh, Judith? I agree, I think that'd be helpful and also, whether or how the amended language would address the concerns that came up, you know, a year, a year and a half ago regarding the cell tower proposal on Jacobs Road, how that would have, um, how, how that would have responded to that concern. So, yeah, thank you. So, so just my, just a quick point, Zach, is it sounds like what you're doing is you're trying to make the cell tower language clear about where we want that infrastructure and where we don't want the infrastructure. That correct? correct. Yeah. Okay. And what and, and one of one of the criticisms that came up in the you know with the proposal around Jacobs Road was the question of did you know could could people in town reasonably predict what we were going to do based on what was in the regs and what yeah. was being proposed. Yeah. And so we're trying to make that clearer, so it's a little it's a little easier for everyone to see. Yeah, yes. this is this is what the plan says. This is what yeah. proposed. Does it meet the yeah. plan or not? Okay. So if you could send us that language when you get it crafted up, that would yep. be great. So maybe we could have some input on it before the hearing. Yeah. All right. Sounds that good. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any questions to Zach? I don't see any. Okay. Thanks, well, thanks again, Zach. You're welcome. We'll, we'll thanks, be in sir. touch soon. Um, so that takes care of H. The next item is I, it's discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. And the first bullet is consideration of mask mandate rule repeal. So this is a controversial item. Um, Kyle put it on Front Porch Forum. I saw the emails. I saw a bunch of them. Um, I've asked people to call in tonight. We have um, the owner of Dudley Store is on. Where do we want to proceed with this first? Kyle, do you want to give us an extrapolation of what you came out with? I read I can, a bunch. I can I give a summary. In. Sure. Okay, uh, that would be good. So, so at the website are posted two documents with uh, emails that were received uh, either by Bruce or by Bruce and me or by me. Uh, everything that was received by Bruce and me is in the, tra <clears throat> the tranche that uh, is under the ones that came to the town office. I just posted the ones that came exclusively to me. Um, and I have done a rough tally of them, there was one more that, that came in uh, about 6.25 uh, this evening uh, that is not an, posted there. Uh, so I added that to my tally. Uh, it was a little tricky making a tally because <clears throat> some people wrote, most people wrote only for themselves. Some people wrote on behalf of their spouse. Some people wrote on behalf of you know, all four members of their family. Uh, I, I tried to um, 
you know, respect the, the uh, voting numbers of people writing in, in the tally. And then uh, some people said, well, I think you should drop it immediately or let it expire when it's due to expire on March 17th. Some people said, I'd like, I think you should either mm -hmm. extend it or let it expire. So in those cases, I just made a mark in, in both columns. Um, for um, Just to remind you, the Front Porch Forum asked for feedback for people who wanted us to drop the mask mandate immediately tonight, to let it expire at the end of 30 days from the last authorization, which would be March 17th, or to renew it for another 30 days, or to take some other action. And um, the, the votes then tallied the way I described come 18 for dropping it, 17 for, uh, sorry, seven uh, for letting it expire on March 17th and 13 for extending it. So one way of looking at that is that uh, it's almost a two to one margin in favor of not extending it. Uh, another way of looking at it, putting the, the expire and extend uh, together is uh, it's pretty even 18 to 20 in terms of uh, not dropping dropping it tonight or not dropping it tonight. Well, thank you, Carl. That was very useful and very thorough. And I liked the, what you did. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, now I'm gonna, I'd like to open it up to the public. I know Angela's got work to do. She's been on here for a while. Um, so what do you think, Angela, as the owner of Dudley store? Yeah. Um... I would like the town to, to end the mandate. It doesn't honestly matter to me too much whether it's tonight or just letting it expire. Um, I can give kind of a very brief reason for that. So, I mean, I have been very in favor of mask use when I feel like it has been sort of like warranted and effective. I think that following right now, both Vermont Department of Health and like general CDC guidelines, I think it's time to end it and sort of make it a personal choice. Um, Dudley's in particular, the having a mask mandate right now has put a bit of a hardship on both our employees and the business. Um, it's something that a lot of people don't like. <laughs> and we have definitely had people, you know, they come to the door and they see the sign and they turn around because um, they don't want to do business with us because we have the sign up. Um, but yeah, it's been really important to me to, to follow guidelines and follow the data and what I think makes sense. But I think that ending the mask mandate will still allow for a personal choice, which I think is super important. Um, I think that people need to be able to feel comfortable, but I do think that we kind of need to move in a direction of ending it now. Thank you, Angel. So I, um, this is Kim Watson and I can't raise my hand because I'm on a phone. So just let me know when I can speak. <laughs> hey, Kim, you can speak. Um... Um, Ms. Watson, you can speak now. Um, I'm sorry I'm hogging the computer, but um, <laughs> you're outside on the phone, and uh, I think you should start cooking supper, so you should probably speak yeah. now. <laughs> okay, so just to, I, I did a little research um, today as well, and I think when I called in when you did the mask mandate, one of the things that the you know, Tom Kirchin had said, and some other people had said that they really wanted to do the mask mandate to keep the hospitalizations down, people in the ICU and things like that. And it, it was effective at the time. And I just wanted to say in the whole state, there's only 25 hospitalizations. There's only three in ICU. And in the last week and a half, the state has done some erroneous reporting and I don't know if anybody saw the uh, documentation that came out because Washington County apparently had the highest number of COVID in the whole state and that it, everybody was freaking out, but it was erroneous reporting. And again, today, the state came on and said the deaths reported for March 6th were also incorrect and showed three deaths and only there were no deaths, there was zero deaths in the state. So to, I just would like to, to also see the mask mandate dropped because um, I'd rather encourage the signs that say, you know, a no masks are required if you're vaccinated and to keep that plugging that key essential vaccination 
versus, um, you know, and saying that it's recommended that if you're not vaccinated, that you come in with a mask. And that's just all I'd like to say. So just, just thank you, Kim. Uh, just to be clear, Kim would like to drop the vaccination mandate in East Montpelier because she feels that we should be pushing vaccines. A vaccination, come into Dudley's if you're vaccinated. If you're not, you should wear a mask. So that is giving the message that vaccines are important and not be saying to people that are vaccinated, you have to wear a mask. Uh, anyway, um, enough for me. There's other people on the line. Does anybody else have any, oh, Scott has, has his hand up, Scott? I, I, lo I love agreeing with Kim because we don't always agree on everything. But um, <clears throat> yes, and, I, and I, I've been chairing the, um, the task force group, the COVID task force group for since this whole nightmare started at, at uh, the Unitarian Church and we've um, already started in-house um, services and people actually people can to, to a limited degree. And I, I, I totally agree with Kim at this point um things should be relaxed um the business owners need a break at this point and um if you've already been fully vaccinated i guess and boosted um i agree with angela and um i, th I think that the, the rules should be changed not waiting till uh not waiting till they expire but i would i would suggest you to you would um to change tonight thank you scott Thank you, Scott. Um, is there anybody else here that would like to comment on that before select board members would like to have their say? I, I don't know. There's other members of the public tuning in or not. Um, I've had a lot of calls. Please ask, please end the mass mandate. Uh, East Montpelier Home Center has not been doing it. Um, I did reach out to Tom Swenson. I wasn't able to get a hold of him. I just wondered what his thought was. Um, but, you know, I've been doing my due diligence, not through Front Ports Forum, but just speaking to the ordinary public, walking down the street. And overwhelmingly, they would like us to end the mandate. Um, I have not run into one person of the general public walking up and down the street around the post office or Dudley's that wants us to extend it, or they would like us to end it now. Uh, so, and Andrus, A. Andrus, please end the mandate. Um, so I'd like to open it up to the select board members. What do you think? Hey, Seth. Zach yeah. has got his hand up. Oh, Zach, you have your hand up. Oh, sorry. sorry, Seth. Yeah, I just, you know, you know j just to reiterate with you know, Kim and Scott, you know, one thing that I have seen is some questions about the CDC guidelines of is this area you know, high transmission. Partly there is some, there are some issues with their data. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that the CDC issued that guidance, you know, at the start of the Delta wave and the relationship between cases and hospitalizations has really changed from Delta to Omicron. And so we're seeing far fewer pe people come into the hospital. I'm not wearing my planning commission hat anymore. I'm wearing my member of the general public who happens to work for the hospital hat at the moment. Um, yeah. You know, we, we have seen far, you know, as a percentage of the total cases, far, far fewer people have ended up in the hospital in Omicron than they did in Delta. And so yeah. I think that in some ways that guidance is a little outdated now. Yeah. Yeah, I read the same, actually. Um, so I don't see any more hands up. What do you think, the rest of the select board? Carl, do you want to speak first? Uh, sure. I, based on what we've heard tonight, based on the feedback we've gotten, I don't uh, see that we have a mandate to extend this. Um, I don't think there's any one right or wrong way to proceed here. I think we're flying by the seat of our pants as non-medical experts in the face of uh, a pandemic. Um, we just have to use our best judgment uh, based on listening to medical experts and, uh, and listening to the people around us. Um, I do uh, take seriously one of the letter writers who said, uh, you know, dropping the mandate basically says 
people who have compromised immune systems or are medically unable to get vaccinations are to live life as second class citizens and not be able to risk going out into public spaces. Uh, you know, having everybody wear masks uh, does ensure that those who are vaccinated and those who are unvaccinated, uh, if it's followed, um, but it ensures that both vaccinated and unvaccinated people are, um, are masked up and protecting others. Uh, so I think there's an argument for, for keeping it for a while. Um, I think, you know, given the split on this, um, I, I would say, let's just uh, let the current mandate expire on March 17th and, and take no further action tonight. Uh, well, thank you, Carl. Um, Amy, what is your, what do you think? I think that, well, I'm sort of inclined just to cancel the mandate now, but then it could be a little jarring, I guess. Like just all of a sudden it's not there anymore rather than let it expect, would it be jarring? Does anybody have an opinion on that? Um, I, I, Amy, this is Kim. I, I think what um, it's not really jarring because you're not saying the masks are going away. They are not no. disappearing. What you're encouraging is that you want people that are not vaccinated to have masks <clears throat> still. And the people that are vaccinated have, you know, uh, can, can choose whether they want to have a mask on or not. And I think that's what we're trying to encourage. I guess a point of clarification, if we're either allowing the mask mandate to expire on its own on the 17th, or we vote today, we're not replacing it with something else, correct? No. It's people right. will determine whether they want to wear a mask or don't want to wear a mask. And business owners like um, Angie or others are not going to be validating whether someone has a vaccine or not and ensuring that they're wearing a mask. So it's, if there's no mandate, folks have to determine or you know can determine on their own whether they're going to wear a mask. Employees can decide if they wanna wear a mask or not wear a mask, but it's not being replaced by something else. No, well, just but to, business... just to clarify, point, yeah. uh, point of order, we did pass a resolution back when we were originally frustrated in our attempt to pass a, a mask mandate. We did pass a resolution uh, encouraging vaccination and mask wearing. And uh, there was no expiration date on that, if I recall correctly. So yes, Judith, right. we aren't, um, there's no proposal that I've heard tonight to replace uh, our current mask mandate with anything, but, but that still remains in effect. Thank you. But I just wanna say, Judith, uh, wait for a second is that then it's up to the business. They can put what they want on the door. They can say, vaccinated, don't have to wear a mask. If you're not vaccinated, we strongly encourage you to wear a mask. They can, they can, they're, that's their right. And it's also the right for people to wear a mask or not, which at this point seems entirely appropriate. Uh, that's my opinion anyway, so. And, and that's the governor's stand as well, and yeah. the state stand yeah. as well. Right. So Amy, was your question thought answered appropriately, you think, about the jarring I think so. aspect? Yeah, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, and Judith. Um, I, I think um, torn, I, I do appreciate the comments and I appreciate um, Angie, you're coming and hearing your thoughtful um, concerns and also how you have applied the mandate. And I appreciate you and your employees who have done that over the past um, several several weeks or months um, and really appreciate your adherence to that. Um, I think I'm on the fence about letting it expire on its own versus removing it today. I'm not, I, I think that the, um, as Carl identified the split between letting it expire on its own um, and letting it expire now, um, I, I'm not feeling we need to, to um, extend it um, on the fence about whether we let it expire, die a natural death on the 17th, or we do it now. Um, or India now, right. Yeah, so okay. I, 
you know, and, you know, if we're letting folk know that it's ending on the 17th or it will end on the 17th, you know, it allows people time to adjust or, you know, those folks who are immunocompromised or live with people who are immunocompromised or live with young kiddos who are under five can make sure that, golly, I'm walking into a place, you know, there won't be the mask mandate anymore. So I need to make sure that me and my kids, you know, we need to decide how we're going into places. So I think oh, uh, I've kind of I talked myself this, into, can I, oh. can, I, can I finish my thought? I'm sorry, I think I just talked myself into letting it expire on the 17th versus taking action today. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, well, thank you, Judith. So Judith. Who's that? I'll Is that you, Kim? Again. I was just gonna say to um, understand that the state has also lifted the mass mandate requirements in the schools as of uh, February 28th. So that too only puts it forth that, you know, why, why keep it extending it when there's, when already it's being lifted in so many other places and it's not being followed. I mean, this is the other thing that it's like putting a rule in place where People aren't policing it. It's kind of like going over the speed limit and not having any cops on the road. You know, why, why are we doing it? Well, I think we're doing it because there are people like Angie who had adhered to it and we appreciate that. And we have speed limits because we're encouraging people to drive safely. So we're hoping that members of the public do what they can to protect each other. Um, I'm not proposing extending the mandate. I'm proposing that we allow it to expire um, by its own terms, which folks have represented as the 17th. Okay, so I just want to hear from one more select board member, John Jewett, who hasn't had a chance to say much. John, what do you think? Um, well, <clears throat> I think when we when we were talking about passing this mandate, <clears throat> we were talking with Dr. Kirchin. I think we had said in that meeting that we expected, you know, we're not going to make everybody wear a mask with a mask mandate. And then we were expecting probably to get 20% of improvement in mass wearing. And, um, and, and I think that after our, our discussion last week, I mean, we've gone from 37 hospitalizations at 25. Um, we've gone from a positivity rate of 4.9% to 4.2%. And, and I've heard it discussed several times now that the Omicron virus is not sending as many people to the hospital. Um, I am not in favor of, of extending this in any way um, because we're surrounded by communities who aren't, don't have mask mandates. And I can't see that East Montpelier is gonna suddenly drive a, a surge because we are five businesses, we allow people to go in and, and not wear a mask. And, and I think that, I mean, we can let this thing play out to the end or we can end it tonight. I don't have a strong feeling either way. Um, but I do know when I go into Berlin, people aren't, you know, people wear masks if they want to, if they don't want to, they don't. I've gone, I went to the price shopper the other day. I wasn't going to wear a mask. I put a mask on and I was like, because I felt uncomfortable not wearing a mask. And I went in and, uh, you know, probably two thirds of their employees weren't wearing masks anymore. Um, I think Walmart did away with their mask mandate. Um, they see a lot more business than Dudley's does. <laughs> And, uh, and I, I suppose that's not a really good example, you know, just because somebody drops a mask mandate, it's not, it, um, we, we don't need to follow suit. But I do feel that the data is indicating that this is going in the other direction, unless something comes along that's different, another, another variant. Um, I think that we should drop the mask mandate. I strongly feel we should. I'm sick of it, actually. So it, from my point of view, I would like to end it tonight because... I empathize with the employees and some of these businesses like Dudley's. They're just sick and tired of it. And I, f I feel their pain. And it's like, you know, we go into the home center, not one person's wearing a mask. I don't know about the fireworks place, but Dudley's is a place I go into every single day. And they're looking at me like, Seth, what the heck is going on here? So that's where I am. I'd like to end it. I don't know if I have the support. I don't know if we can make a motion. That's why I would end it tonight, Seth. I absolutely would. I would yeah. too. I'll make a motion that we end the mask mandate tonight. I All second right. that. All right. Um, so, yes, Carl. 
Yeah, so people have talked about Dudley's in the home center. I'd like to bring up a, another major business in town, which is Plainfield Hardware, and uh, they have a mask mandate, and uh, yep. I'm frequently in there, and um, it is universally followed by the employees and the uh, the customers. Uh, it's, it's so rare that uh, customers object that they say, oh, yeah, there was one guy uh, last Tuesday, I think it was, who came in and, and objected, and uh, we just had him pay and get out of the store as soon as possible. So, um, you know, where where there's a strong culture in the store to enforce it, uh, at least in that place, then uh, then it's followed. I would and, wear a mask, and I'd wear a mask there. I mean, I do when I go in. I mean, obviously they have it. Right. That's their requirement. That's what they want, and that's what we should right. do. Yeah. And that's that's to totally up to them, and that's per perfect. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'd like to call the question. All those in favor? You, you, you uh, can't do that, Seth. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't. Well, we um, no, no. The, the procedure for calling the question is is to make a motion to call the question. The, okay. uh, there's no debate on that motion, and uh, or you can just say, "Is there any other discussion?" And pr probably people will just not say anything. Is there any further discussion on the motion that John put forth? Okay. All those in favor of John's motion that was seconded by Amy, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. Oh. Nay. Okay, we have three ayes and two nays. The ayes have it. The motion is passed. And by our rules of procedure, which we just passed again tonight, then uh, select board members have the, the right to state for the minutes why they voted the way they did. And um, I, I uh, wish to say that, uh, as I said earlier, I would prefer to let the current mandate uh, die a natural death, as someone said, uh, and expire when it's due to expire, not extend it. Thank you, Carl. I would, I would concur with Carl. Um, and also, based upon the um, feedback that there were um, a number of folk who were interested in extending it, and also those who would um, wanted it to expire on its own. So that's yep. why I, but I do appreciate the comments that were made by folks seeking that it yep. be ended today. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Thank you for everybody for tuning in and participating in this important discussion. Um, thank you, Angela. I know you've got school work to do, but thanks a lot. Um, yeah, thank you for, for listening. That was helpful. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> See, it's not so bad, was it? <laughs> no. Uh, just to clarify, does that mean that I can tell employees yes. and customers tomorrow? Okay. All right. Yes. Great. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Um, okay. So I'd like to move to the next item on the agenda. I believe it's appointments. Is that uh, correct, Bruce? No, the second half of this uh, COVID thing is. is oh, yeah. Uh, the meeting well, like methodology. Meeting, right, right. I forgot yeah. that. And, and it's probably worth clarifying that what we did tonight applies to our mask mandate for you know, public place, places that invite in members of the public that are not yeah. owned by the town. We still yeah. have a mask mandate in place for the town office. We have not considered doing otherwise. And well, that's that's the next item is Discussion on select board meeting methodology. Well, that's not the next item. The next item is select board methodology. What I'm saying is visitors to the town office are required to have uh, masks now, regardless of whether the select board is meeting at the time. And we haven't changed that. And it's not on the agenda to change that. Okay. Um, so we were, we're gonna discuss the select board meeting. Correct. Methodology. Um, now, the Planning Commission is having in-person meetings, just as a question, right? Is that Bruce, correct? Yes. They, their last one was, yes. Yes. So, moving forward on the select board meeting discussion, is this the time that we can change it to something different? I don't remember how long our current methodology is um, effective. <laughs> Arguably, Seth, you could change it on your own volition. <laughs> okay. uh, but okay. uh, since you did that last time and you got some blowback, 
it makes mm -hmm. more sense to talk <laughs> it through this time. <laughs> well, I definitely want to talk it through. Um, so the way, way we have it now is that no one can come in in person. I correct? have a question. I have a question about that. Um, that's what I understood had been the case uh, for a couple meetings, uh, yeah. but now in the announcement, uh, it says public and select board members are encouraged to participate remotely, as explained yeah. below. And then it gives the, the Zoom options. Encouraged yeah. is not mandated, so it sounds as if uh, it's perfectly okay to come into the town office for the meeting. So I'm not sure. What, so, what our so can I is. Can I push back yeah. on that one a little bit, Carl? Please, That's please. the language we've used all along, uh, that encouraged word. Uh, I think the concept was encouraged to participate, period. <laughs> uh, and it just has gotten kind of smushed together. Uh, I agree, it, it's kind of a mixed message, but the intent was not to have it open. I see. Okay, so just to move forward with the discussion, with the plan, where, what are we looking at here? So we still, nobody wants to meet in person? I wanna meet in person. I, I have no problem meeting in person. What are you telling us, Seth? You don't wanna meet in person? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna encourage us to meet in person. Oh, okay, all right. Ideally, ideally. Okay. I don't know where the comfort level is here among the rest of the select board members. I think I we should meet in person again. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Judith? Um, yep, but don't be offended if we're wearing a mask. So. No, of course not. <laughs> we're used to that. <laughs> okay, but where the tricky part is, is what about the public? We, we can't open it up just to us and not open to the public. Is that correct, Bruce? That is correct. That's what I thought. Are we comfortable with opening up our meetings to the public? If we're gonna open it up to ourselves, we kind of have to. I'm, I'm fine with it and we don't get many people come in for the public anyway. And the I think Zooming, that's the reason I'm fine with it is because yeah. it is a small room and it, you know you might right. get a little creeped out the first time just because we're not used to that anymore, but who comes, not very few people come to our meetings in person. And we still would have the Zoom option, which I think people have become more yes. comfortable and more used to. Yes. And, and I think that this is uh, something that we can evaluate on a case by case basis in the future. If we see that we're going to have an agenda item that we anticipate a large turnout for, we might decide to go back to only remote. I mean, a good example is the tree. Um, it's not going to be hearing anymore, but it will be on our agenda. Mm -hmm. This discussion on the tree uh, shade tree plan. So that could be where there's a lot of people that would want to come in, but I don't know. They People like to zoom in now anyway, so I'm not sure. I guess we'll just have to evaluate. But we're going to change the language on our agenda, are we not? Isn't that the plan? It would change no. back to what it was two months ago. Right. And what was that? <laughs> I just want to be clear. I'm just trying to be clear here. Hang on, and I'll pull one up, and I'll tell you what it said. Oh, good. I'm not uh, trying to be difficult. I just want to be clear. So the way it was phrased before, East Montpelier has resumed in-person meetings at the municipal office building with a mask mandate. A remote attendance option will be offered via Zoom with participation details below. Sounds good to me. Everybody comfortable with that? Okay, sure. sounds good. I don't think we need a motion, do we? We can just change that. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay, anything else on the mask, on the town management light of COVID-19 agenda item? Is there anything else? Okay. Huh. So going on to appointments, it says potential executive session, but I'm not thinking there is anything we have to go in. Is there some, anything we have to go on in executive session? Not that I know of. Only if we're going to have a big argument over it <laughs> for some reason. But that first, doesn't first usually point. happen. That doesn't mean it won't happen. Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Look at that. 
So I, 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 mo I moved. I moved to appoint this late in the select board memo. I second that. Uh, any further discussion on that? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, that's a pretty short list. It won't okay. be next time. It won't be? This no. is that weird one in every seven year on average situation where the town meeting is on Tuesday, the first, yeah. and the first meeting is on the seventh. Yeah. So there isn't the turnaround time we usually have. Right. The slate of appointments will be ready for the 21st. Yeah, and that'll be a big long list. Yes. Yeah. Now, we haven't done the um, two editions, and we probably should now. Um, one is the planning for ARPA. And Mr. Atnar has requested the board develop a plan of action for the discussion itself for engaging the public in advance. Now, do we have guidelines for this, the ARPA request? I don't think that's what Carl was talking about. Yes, you have guidelines, but he was talking about the public side of it. Yeah. How you were going to put out yeah, the, but what? Right. What, don't you have to have guidelines when you put out a, a thought well, or you don't? Okay. So you just say. Well, I, I think, yeah. I, I, is what you're getting at, Seth, that if we're going to ask for public input, we need to be clear to them on what we want input on and on yeah. what the range of possibilities are. That was my thought. <laughs> buying a buying a pony for everybody in town, for example, is probably Well, I thought it was a bushel option. of money for everybody in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we, we, yeah, we want to have some materials that clearly explains um, what we, um, what our options are, the, the quantity of, of money available to us. And, uh, you know, it sounds like we can use it just to uh, reduce taxes if we want uh, and continue on as normal. It sounds like we could keep taxes where they are and make some significant investments in the town. We've got some ideas that we've talked about, and I think it's important to open it up to the public um, because this is their money and, uh, and get a sense from them on what they want to do with this opportunity. And uh, I, I did not bring in uh, proposed guidelines for the public involvement and, and it is late. Uh, so I'm, I'm willing to uh, put this off until next meeting for a more detailed discussion if, if folks want. But if you want to get the ball rolling here, um, that'd be great too. I just thought that before you put out anything about ARPA, you have to say something about what the, what, what's, what we're looking for. Uh, we're not just looking for people to say, we want $20,000 to fix the house. We're looking for something that fits within the framework mm -hmm. of the guidelines that we just got, or we have. Is that correct? I mean, we're going to have to craft up some language that meets the requirements. So that's going to take some time. So uh, I would also push back just a little bit, Seth, because of this get out of jail free card that you now have yeah. where you can just go will absorb that money into yes. into the uh, essentially the general fund uh, yeah. I would say that it's your decision and your decision alone about that one and then you okay. take the use of that if you decide to take it all in you take right. the use of that to a public engagement effort, whatever. Okay, so the choice would be, we could put it in a general fund and say, we're gonna use it for X, Y, Z, and present that to the public and say, do you approve this for the construction of a highway garage or a town hall or something, right? You would put that out to the public. That's that the side saying? of this that I would put out to the public, yes. Yeah. I guess I would ask for a more open ended process, uh, and not a referendum on choices the select board has come to, but rather yeah. uh, say, yeah. hey, 
there are a lot of smart people out there who've been looking at this town uh, with loving eyes for a long time and have uh, some good ideas. Let's um, let's get some some input. You know, we've been talking about it some, but what else is out there? And Carl, I apologize. I agree with you 100%. Okay. What I was saying is that the the initial decision as to whether to accept that uh, essentially checkoff should be the select boards, and then what to do with it. What you just said. Okay, so I guess I'm not understanding, Bruce, um, what what the other way of going is, other than uh, the select board saying, "Okay, we're going to take this money into the general fund." Thank you very much. What what would be an alternative to doing that? What I don't think you will take the money in to the general fund. Thank you very much. I think you'll take the money in, holding it separately, and decide what to do with the money for special projects, whatever the town decides. That's the part the public engagement end comes in. I think right now your focus should be on what do we want to do as the initial step? Do you want to just absorb the money back in as the so-called lost revenue checkoff? I understand that. And what I'm yeah. trying to get at is you are recommending, or it sounds like you're recommending that um, that we decide to absorb it into the, the general fund. I'm wondering what other decision might we make? I think if it's as easy as we've been led to believe, you shouldn't make any other decision. Right. I, <laughs> I don't think there's that, another but, decision out there. <laughs> but what other possibilities are there? To Otherwise, follow the guidelines. Decision. It's, okay. You're asking us to make a decision, but you're not presenting dis a decision. You're saying this is a thing that you should do. But what's the alternative? No, no, no. That's what the April 4th meeting is for. To have those possibilities put forward to the select board. Yeah. What I'm saying is the select board should hear those and then engage the public. I'm not sure what engaging the public between now and April 4th will do for that April 4th discussion. Okay, so let me, let me see if I understand you correctly. Uh, <laughs> so, so it sounds like the April 4th discussions, let me just say something, because I'm not sure myself, Carl, and yeah. I appreciate the discuss discussion. It yeah. sounds like the April 4th, we're going to have our options, whether to put it in the general fund or not. Is that correct, Bruce? What you're going to have is, is uh, regional planning and hopefully some guidance from VLCT, but you'll have Bonnie Wanning here uh, to essentially just lay out where the, this ARPA funding environment is sitting right now. It's changed. Yeah. And you need to see whether what seems to be too good to be true stuff is actually holding up right and if it is then go to make the your move and then figure out how to engage the public so that you're making effective use of this once in a generation pot of money okay so i think i understand you yeah. april 4th is the bureaucratic question of uh, what do we do in response to getting this ARPA money bureaucratically? How do, how do we account for it, bookkeeping? And then well, this, after that, we'll have the basis for going out to the town and, and saying, okay, we'd like your input on how to actually spend this money, regardless of which account we put it in. And if you do what, if you do the, the uh, checkoff, you can go back to the public with a blank slate. Right, right. Whereas if you don't do the checkoff, you have to fit within those very narrow guidelines. Got it. Right. So that's a good point. So now we won't be able to stand on the front steps with bushel baskets of money. We can wait till after the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> the roof is dripping. You don't want to stand outside with the barrel <laughs> right now. Okay. So are you, are you clear, Kyle? Because I'm pretty clear. I'm pretty clear. understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to wait until the fourth. If the checkoff taking into our general fund is the way to go, which sounds like it is, then we'll take the money and then we'll, then we'll go to the public and say, hey, how are we going to spend all this money? Mm -hmm. Yep. Works for me. 
April 4th is coming quick. Okay. So, so now we don't have to do anything as far as advertising for the free giveaways. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you may want to stop saying that, but yeah, <laughs> it's not that free. <laughs> After the fourth. <laughs> um, what was the next thing on your uh, proposed personal Rosie. matters? Oh yeah, Rosie, town clerk leave bonus for holiday election work. You have made uh -huh. a habit of the past few years providing a um, bonus of vacation time or sick leave time yeah. for Rosie in thanks for the election work because that yeah. is a a uh, stressful and time-consuming stretch. Right. Yeah. Whatever works. And we all. Hours in. For it's yeah, also all... it's also a holiday that everybody else gets that I don't. Right. It's the opposite of a holiday for you. What would you like, Rosie? <laughs> Did anybody, I'm sorry, but anybody involved with the election and we were there for the prep, Rosie goes over and above. So whatever you guys can give her as a as just as a citizen, she deserves. Yeah. Absolutely. What? So what, what have we done in the past, Bruce? You've generally given a certain number of hours for hol uh, vacation or sick leave to add to the bank. Mm -hmm. What did we do uh, last year? Rosie, you did you a request? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. Sorry, I interrupted <laughs> you, Bruce. We should give her a day holiday pay or something. What we did last year? <laughs> you did three days worth of sick time to add Three to days. the bank sick time okay is that, is that, that, that rosie is that appropriate or would you like a holiday instead it is appropriate that's fine the, the three days of sick time is that going to work for you it, it will i may have some extended um need for some sick time coming up and i'm currently holding on to vacation time instead because my sick bank isn't as robust as my vacation mm -hmm. So that would be perfectly appropriate. Thank you. I, Just, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Rosie, how many hours did you work on Tuesday? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was about a double day, um, wasn't it? I was officially at, let's see, I stopped at the office at six o'clock to pick up the tabulator. And um, I was up at the school for 6.30 and I was there until 1.30 and I got home at 2.15, but you know, it, I, some some years are much better than others. Some years I'm home by nine o'clock. So can I it, go ahead. Um, go ahead I David. would propose four days instead of three because this year was longer than last year because of the um, school vote as well. So if we made if we made it three days last year, I would propose four days, one day to account for the lost holiday that you didn't get and three days to account for the almost 24 hours you work so that would be my that would be my re request or i'll second that okay yeah sounds good to me all those, uh so we had a motion and we had a second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. so you got four days thank you <laughs> well you deserve it and thank you. We appreciate it. Thank a lot you, of hard work. You do. I learned a lot. I had a lot of help. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. It is. I'm not sure if the quality was there, but at least you had them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hey, I just just want to point out um, you know, select board member participation in the Board of Civil Authority Affairs has varied over the years. Uh, but for, for this uh, election, we had uh, yeah, four members who participated and, and one who had a family uh, emergency going on. Yeah. So uh, I, I want to clap ourselves on the back a little bit. And well go. deserved. Thank you. Um, other town clerks are honestly jealous of the support I get from my BCA. Seriously. Okay, well, that sounds good. Um, we have warrants. Who's in? No one's like down there to sign them, right? Bruce? No, Carl is here. Carl oh, is Carl, here. you're there. Okay, so yep. Carl can sign them. So we need a motion to have Carl sign the warrants. So moved. Second. Yep. We have a second. Amy moved it. I think uh, Judith 
Second it. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 To have Carl sign the warrant. Um, we did the other business. What else is there, Ruth? I'm just looking here. Your select board memo. Uh, not much. Just a reminder to you and Amy that you have a meeting this Friday to review your treasurer applications. Right. We have quite a few. Well, you have right. more than you did, but not quite a few. Yeah, did we get oh, yeah, more like, that I didn't see? I saw two uh, more, but... I yeah, thought we had three more. You three did more? have three more, yes. Three more, okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like six altogether. That's a lot. That's better than, better than <laughs> <Yeah>. two. <laughs> better than better none. Than one. a small state, yes. That's a lot. <laughs> East Small Pair is a small town. Okay. <laughs> so, so where are we in the process? Has the committee vetted all six of these and pass, uh, are passing them on to the select board or what? No, no, no. We have to review the applications on Friday. Because okay. what we did is this, we... This is a committee meeting on Friday. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we asked for, we, we stopped. We asked for more applications and we advertised in other places yeah. that were more costly, but, you know, cost isn't really a consideration at this point. We just really want to get more applications. Right. Got it. So Thank that's you. what we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got six applications and on Friday we'll get together and, and go over them all. Hey Bruce, then, did anybody respond um, to the seven days ad just out of curiosity? Because that was the uh, big expenditure. Okay, that was the big that. expenditure. Yeah, we got expensive. buckets nothing. out of it. Yeah. Okay. Did we get nothing? Nothing out of seven days. Okay. Oh, we indeed, got the three we from, got indeed. from Indeed. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's, okay. that's usually the way it happens, I think. Hmm. Well, that's okay. We got some. Indeed hey, we got applications. <laughs> What's that? Indeed was cheaper. Yeah. A lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. 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 Seven days is a lot, but they have a huge number of, of ads in here. So they must get some success. I saw, yeah. I saw calluses was in there. Yes. Oh, really? The primary things. They said town treasurer and delinquent tax collector. I said, you know, I probably would have included delinquent taxes in the job description, but not necessarily made it a title. <laughs> On the, yeah. Not everybody wants to be a delinquent tax collector. Right. I, I will tell you that the seven days methodology was fantastic. That was the most pleasant experience I've had putting a, a uh, help wanted ad into a newspaper. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, um, Amy's uh, yawning, so it's a little bit past her bedtime. Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> that's okay, I, I, I am too. Um, so the meeting schedule is here. And it is. Look for it. Where the heck is it? April fourth, March twenty first. Okay. Um. Anything else, Bruce? March twenty first, we'll have Lieutenant White here, and and that hopefully the full slate of appointments, and then uh, you're going to have to make you'll have an agenda item to figure out how you want to handle those uh, zoning regs. Uh, because you got to get that in gear because the town plan thing will hit you in, in two months. Right. That's good. That sounds good. Um, okay. I think we're good. Thank, uh, thank you all for attending. And it was a robust meeting for sure. A lot of discussion, a lot of healthy discussion. And I want to thank you all for participating. It was a good meeting. I, I enjoyed it. Yep. I move to adjourn. Yep. Very nice. Do we have a second on that? Oh my God. There. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Guys appear to have it. They do have it. See aye. you again aye. soon. <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Stay healthy. <laughs> yep. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Good night, Bruce. <laughs> So yes, thank you. Hopefully you'll be here this week. I will. Okay. If all goes well, I'll be here. Yes. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks again.